Just hold tight for a second. I've been selling some stuff, so I don't really know how much cash I have. So let's go ahead and look at it. So what we got here, one, two, three, that's 200 bucks. All right, so we've got this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, 180, 180. So that is $380. We've got this. Let's go ahead and take that out. All right, we got one, two, three, another 200, four, yeah, four, that's 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900. So we have a total of $1,280 that I currently have on my person. Now, why did I go through all that? 80% of America can't do that. 80% of America cannot go in their wallet and pull out $1,280. 80%. If you move it up to 2,500, 95% of America cannot come up with that type of cash. In this video, we're gonna discuss why that is the current state of America money-wise. All right, years and years ago, ESPN had this special, 30 for 30 broke. And it was highlighting all of these athletes who had made tens of millions, in some cases, hundreds of millions of dollars in, in retirement, they were broke. I wanna talk about the pathology of why people are broke. But before we get into that, I wanna share a story with you. I used to be like the average American. They had no money, and there were some times that I would be broke broke. What is broke broke? You, I didn't even have gas money. That's how broke I was. And I transformed from that person who, you know, because in my mind, and I want you to listen to me. In my mind, I thought the reason that I was broke is because I didn't make enough money. Not true. Fast forward to when I was homeless and I had that moment of a clarity. I had that epiphany where I began to work a second job and all of that money was earmarked for my savings account. And I was making less money working those BS jobs than I was when I was working in the hospital. So I managed to save $4,000 even though I was making less money than I was in the hospital. So understand, you being broke has nothing to do with how much money you make. It has everything to do with how you spend the money that you make. And this is why I include home economics in everything that I do because most people have atrocious money management habits. They're just really, really bad. Really, really bad. The average person doesn't know how to hold on to money because they spend it, not as soon as they get it, they spend it before they get it with the use of credit. Once again, all right? I got a nice little stack there. And this is what I carry this is the daily carry. I carry the American Express and I carry 
another American Express. This is what I typically, and I have another American Express. And a business credit card. So that's what I typically carry. Now, I'm going to get into this. Now, essentially, I treat these American Express cards like this is a charge card. So I have to, I have to pay that off every month. But typically, I pay it off sometimes twice a month. And this card, 40,000 dollar limit, I've spent about 25,000 on it and I don't carry a balance. At the moment, there is not a balance on those credit cards, nor is there a balance on the stack of credit cards. See, <clears throat> I learned my lesson. For you to have money, once again, it's not about how much money you make. It is how you manage the money that you make. It is critically important for you to properly manage the money that you make. And I see so many people, uh, I see the seduction of online marketing. Hey, you wanna quit your job? Well, join our program and develop this high income skill or you could be like Susie here, who's now making $8,000 a month and she just turned in her two weeks notice to quit her job. Notice <clears throat> that you these people are making above average income. Average income in America is 2,500 to 3,500 bucks per month after taxes. That's where the average person falls and there's a group of people who only make 1500 per month after taxes. So the bulk of America, and I went ahead and I did a video and I did the research, and what I did is I took all government jobs, state and federal, and I just went, went on the internet and crunched some numbers. So 85% or 90%, 91%, if you want to really be on a, you know, to push the envelope a little bit, make less than $35,000 a year. But here's the issue. It's about spending. It's not about how much money you make. It is about spending. I used to work with a girl who made less money than me, but she, because she had really good money management skills, had more money. This girl had two paid off cars and when she bought her house, she put half down. See, let me go ahead and explain something to you. Once you learn how to manage your money, and once you get ahead of the spend curve, the spend curve is bills. This is one of the reasons that I don't have normal bills. I don't have, I, I have a Porsche that I pay cash for. I have a BMW, I pay cash for it. So I don't have car payments on those bills. I don't have, once again, I just showed, I don't have credit card payments. I don't have student loans. Now I do have some business debt that comes from the business. I have an EDIL loan, I have a Stripe loan, and I now have a Lending Point loan. And collectively, the payment on all of those loans is about 1200 bucks a month, but they're business loans. So they're, they're, they just come from business revenue. And then the Stripe loan, they take 20% of my monthly revenue to repay back that loan. So I never even see that money. That is the extent of my debt. But once again, before, and this is very important key, this is very important. Before I increase my income, I learned how to manage money. Let me say this again. Before I increase my income, I learned how to manage money. 
that one year of working that second job and just putting that money in a savings account, not going out and buying t-shirts or shoes or leather jackets month after month that I think it was after taxes, I got close to like 380 bucks per month from that second job every other weekend. I didn't even see the money. The money just went straight to a savings account. And that year taught me how to manage money. This is a skill set that the average American doesn't have. You have people, and this is very, very sad, who make a million dollars a year, who are living paycheck to paycheck. You have NFL players and NBA players who are waiting on their next check because they are broke. And it's because they don't know how to manage money. This is one of the things, and um, you know, HOMEC, Home Economics is a $200 course, and I the link's below. I highly recommend that you get it because before you start making a lot of money, you want to properly manage and optimize the money that you're currently making. If I told you, well, I'm about to tell you, because I went through several stages. During the storage auction business, I used to save 50% of my income, which I thought was a game changer. I didn't understand that there was levels to this. So currently, I am paying my bills this year in 2022 from money I made in 2021. Let me say that again. I am currently paying my bills from money that was made in 2021. What I do is take a chunk of money that I made last year and I put it into my personal checking account to pay my bills. So regardless of what my business does or doesn't do, I'm able to pay my bills and have the security and the comfort of knowing that if my business just ex imploded, just my business just went to crap, that the next year I can pay my bills. And once again, that is not my emergency fund. That is not my long-term emergency fund. That is not my family operating account, nor is that my short-term, that, that's just money that I earmarked and put in the bank. And that's a very advanced level of money management. Because when you get to that level, you will not ever have a fight over money with your wife again. You get to that level, you will not worry about normal bills. And once again, I understand that I'm in a very good position. And it will take many of you a few years just to get your long-term emergency fund together. Because you don't make a lot of money in comparison to your expenditures. So once again, I'm about to give you uh, a playbook on how you can manage your money. And so this is where it starts. It starts with you enrolling in home economics, going ahead, getting in home economics. And it starts with you going through home economics and then optimizing your money. That's the first step. I'm gonna teach you things that you don't know. And then after you've optimized your money and you've got your money properly allocated, then you want to start a small business to make more money. This will dramatically speed up the establishment of your emergency fund. Now, I have a little different uh, viewpoint than Dave Ramsey. I feel that you should establish your emergency fund, your long-term emergency fund, your short-term emergency fund, and your family operating account before you start paying off debt. Why is that? Life happens. If you only have $1,000 in the emergency fund and then you get laid off, everything goes to crap. Everything goes to crap. So if you have your long-term emergency fund, you have your family, your short-term emergency fund, then you have your family operating account all in place. And then let's say you get laid off six months. You Gucci, 
you're good to go. So I feel that it is imperative that you go ahead and establish these emergency funds first before trying to attack debt. So, and this is why once you learn how to keep your paws, your paws off the money, keep your paws off the money, then this is when you can start this small business. And because you have a job, once again, you're not quitting your job. No time soon. I hate those commercials like, oh yeah, you can quit your job. You can quit your job. You can quit your I hate those commercials. I thoroughly hate those commercials. Um, keep your job and then bring in additional revenue, additional revenue. And then let's say you, you and also just to answer this question, cause someone asked this question, should you establish your long-term emergency fund based off your job income or your new combined income? You would base your long-term emergency fund off of your job income. Why? Because you are not touching any of the money from your small business. What you're going to do is take that small business income and you're going to establish your long-term emergency fund first. Then you're going to establish your short-term emergency fund. Then you're going to establish your family operating account. And then at this point, you have a lot of money. Let's just go ahead and throw some numbers out there. Realistic numbers. I'm not going to give you these crazy internet numbers like, well, Jim likes to travel and Jim made $30,000 last month while he was traveling around the world. No, I'm not giving you that, that crap. Let's say you have a job, you make $35,000 a year, you've gone through home economics, you've optimized that, and you're able to pay all your bills and have a little bit left over. Then let's go ahead and say you start an eBay business, which is a template business, but for the average person, it is a good starting business. And let's say you get your eBay business to a profit of 1500. Let's say your eBay business is making 2000, maybe 2500, but after all bills and expenses and the cost of goods is allocated for, you have a $1,500 uh, profit. So $1,500 a month times 12 is $18,000. So your first year, you will get your long-term emergency fund established. And then after that, your second year is literally going to take you because your short term emergency fund should have five thousand dollars in it. So fifteen hundred is going to take you three and a half months to establish your short term emergency fund. And then it's going to take you probably two months to establish your family operating account. So let's say for the next um, 18 months, you're building out your long term emergency fund. You, in your short-term emergency fund and your family operating account. Then, at this point, you're, you're, let's go ahead and say, realistically, your profit of your business has gone up to $2,000 a month. Now, you have $2,000 a month to throw at debt. Let's say you have $10,000 in credit card debt. $2,000 a month, five months, is done. What I suggest is you take the largest credit bill and that's what you should attack first because now you have 2,000, really 2,000 plus because let's say on your job, you got a little raise because once you establish the long-term emergency fund, the short-term emergency fund, the family operating account, that's all the money you need to save. So at this point, you can aggressively start paying down debt and pretty much within a year, you're out of debt. Your credit card debt's paid off, your, uh, car payment is paid, your car is paid off. And what do you do with this money? You've got a choice. You can, and also because you've been living like this, you have developed and achieved financial discipline. You know how to manage money and properly allocate your money. So once the debt's paid off, and let's say this is, you're going into year two, let's say year three, and your eBay income has gone up to $3,000 a month. Okay, at this point, You've got some options. You could take that $3,000 per month and throw it in investments, which is $36,000 a year. Hold on a second. Let's go ahead 
and get into the investment calculator. All right, so we're in the investment calculator. So what we're gonna do is you have paid off your debt, you've established your long-term emergency fund, and now you're making $3,000 per month that you can put into investments. You're actually making more than that because you have taxes. So we can do that at 17 years. And boom, you know, get to that magical million dollar mark in 17 years. So this whole process is taking you 19 years from establishing the part-time business, getting your, your money together. So this is something you can do relatively fast, but let me show you something more significant. Let's say you really work hard and you get your business to $5,000 per month that you can throw in investments. And let's, let's see what you can do in 10 years. Almost a million. So at 5,000, it'll take you 12 years to get to a million. 12 years, 12 years. So you go ahead and establish a part-time business after establishing your long-term emergency fund, establishing your short-term emergency fund, establishing your family operating account, and getting out of debt, and then you start cranking, you can become a mirror. Let's let's go ahead and see what happens at six thousand. What will happen at six thousand? Six thousand. You can do that million in almost 10 years. Let's just go ahead and do 11. And once again, this is at 6%. This is at 6%. Now, let's just go ahead and go crazy. Let's say you have a small business and you can invest $10,000 per month. So you get your business up to $10,000 per month and you're investing. Now, here's the thing. If you look at your contributions, your contributions are the bulk of your money because you've only made $200,000 in interest. So let's go ahead and put that at 15 years. And then you get to 2.9 but now you have made over a million dollars in interest. So one of the things that happens with investing, and this is why a small business is a better investment than just investing, is you make money faster because you have contributed $1.8 million that came from your small business. So this is the sequence number one. You go ahead and you get out of, you, you go ahead and go down below and enroll in home economics. Step number one, optimize your money and learn how to control your money. Then step number two is to start a small business. Step number three is to, sequence number three is to establish your long-term emergency fund, establish your short-term emergency fund, establish your family operating account. Then sequence number four is to get out of debt. And then sequence number five is to start investing. That's the playbook, that's the game plan, and that is the safest, most secure way for you to amass a lot of money and to be protected, to be protected. So go below and enroll in home economics today.